Brian Jeffries, Arizona's play-by-play -play announcer, has been behind the microphone for more than 2,000 U of A games. Jeffries makes the job look so easy, you'd never know how hard it was for him to become the voice of the Wildcats. Recently, I joined him in the broadcast booth on game day. When I think of Wildcat sports, I think of Brian Jeffries. Fans have come out strong for the first meeting between Arizona and Texas Tech in 30 years. It's almost time for kickoff, and Brian Jeffries is in the radio broadcast booth atop Arizona Stadium. Power five versus power five, first time this season for both teams. It's anything but the first time for Brian Jeffries. Growing up in Tacoma, Washington, he was destined to be a play-by-play -play announcer. I would go to high school games and I would sit in the top row of the bleachers and just record it into a little tape recorder. And after a few years of experience, Jeffries made it to the University of Arizona in the early 1980s, but not in his current role. I was doing pregame and postgame. I was doing a sports talk show. I was doing sports reports on the radio. Jeffries wanted to be Arizona's play-by-play -play announcer, but when the job opened up, he was turned down and then turned down a second time. And when it opened up a third time, legendary CBS NFL announcer Ray Scott, it's just plain cold, who had left the cold in Green Bay to retire to Tucson, was convinced to come out of retirement and call Wildcat games. He's the reigning Pac-10 player of the week. Meanwhile, a couple of on-air mistakes made Brian Jeffrey start to doubt his own abilities until Ray Scott said otherwise. And he looked me in the eye and uh, only in, in Ray Scott's voice could he say, Brian, I've been in the broadcasting business for 55 years and I've never called a perfect game. Ray Scott soon retired permanently, and after being turned down for the job three prior times, Jeffries applied for a fourth time. They looked at me and said, uh, Brian, we're tired of you coming in here applying for this job. And of course, then I'm ready for, okay, go ahead, let me have it, so you can have it. It's your job. And I'm like, so I got it. I did get the job. So you got this job on your fourth try? Yeah, fourth, fourth. try. That was in 1987. To me, he's the best in the business. Longtime football color analyst Lamont Lovett has been by his side for the Wildcats' greatest moments. All the amazing calls that he's had on the air. When you think of historic, any any you know great play that's happened in our history, the leap by, by the leg. Jenkins straight back to throw, has time, waits, steps up. He's going to run. Jenkins at the five. He dives for the end zone. He's in. Touchdown, Way. Arizona. 360 spin. The Cats lead the game 30 to 28 with four seconds left. Beating Nebraska at the Holiday Bowl. Intercepted. The Callister back the other way. The game is over. And the Wildcats have beaten the Cornhuskers. And when it comes to basketball... He's been the play-by-play -play guy since 1988. My first year, I got spoiled. 1987-88, Arizona went to the Final Four for the first time. And Jeffries has been courtside ever since, capturing the Wildcats' greatest moments. There was Lute Olson's incredible 500th win. Knocked away, stolen, Simon from mid-court. And the ultimate, beating three number one seeds to win the 1997 NCAA championship. The 1997 national champions, your Arizona Wildcats. He was behind the microphone for a College World Series win. And along the way, Jeffries has become part of the Arizona Wildcat program as much as any coach or player. Tate from the shotgun will take the snap. On this night, the Wildcats beat Texas Tech thanks to an 84-yard run by quarterback Khalil Tate. Splits a man at the 50. Tate may be gone. Jeffrey says his voice won't be going silent anytime soon. One of the great things about doing college sports is the energy you get from being around the student athletes all the time. He's could have gone on to, to you know, so-called bigger and better opportunities, but he, he's just a part of the Tucson community and he loves it. And, um, and I'm sure that everybody really appreciates and loves having him here.